Um, Program Director, um, Chief Whip of the NCOP, Speaker of the Johannesburg Metro, Ndadira Gama. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you, the few of you members of the media who have attended to us when we talk to you about this week that we are spending in this province of Gauteng with our apex program of taking parliament to the people. We are here on what we call a pre-visit and our theme for this year is the impact of migration, deepening cooperative governance for accelerated service delivery and development. Our constitution requires us to continuously be a vibrant, responsive democracy as South Africa. So from time to time, we have to engage with one another on all issues which make South Africa better. We resolved in 1994 to make South Africa a better place to live in. Democracy requires that citizens should be continuously engaged in the governance through interaction with those who make the decisions. We must not end up just by making a mark during the elections at the ballot box. Democracy means that every time there is an important issue, whether it is a challenge, whether it is a positive or a negative thing, that we need to go back to the people and to hear what their thoughts are in the process of strengthening our democracy so that they feel that we genuinely serve them. Program Director, the main purpose and focus from, for this flagship of the NCOP is to sit together with all the relevant stakeholders in government, plus the beneficiaries of government programs, to identify bottlenecks that result in service delivery backlogs, and to jointly find ways in which we can find solutions to the challenges. We must make sure that no one is left out. We are all here as the leaders to take questions, to respond to issues, and therefore to follow up on the issues which might come up as we go around. All of this is to make sure that we better the lives of South Africans. We are a parliament which is people oriented we seek to involve all citizens in the issues of governance for better service delivery and development. Parliament is responsible for making laws. The provincial legislatures are responsible for the areas of legislation ascribed to them in the constitution. Local government is the cold face of our service delivery. So whatever we do at a provincial and a national level, plays itself out in local government. But they also have powers to make the bylaws. We as the NCOP, is that house that is made of, uh, of delegates from provinces, but we are that house that coordinates the business of the national, the provincial, and the local sphere of government. And that is why we always push this taking parliament to the people program. Now, we are unique because we stretch across the three spheres of government, as I've said. And since the fifth parliament, we started on this sector-based approach as per the guidelines of the NDP. In 2015, we were in the Western Cape, in the Eden District. We then went to the Eastern Cape in 2016. We went to the Free State last year, 2017. We focused in the Eastern Cape on specifically education. Last year when we went to the Free State, we focused on health. We are here in Gauteng to look at the impact of migration on service delivery. And we do this 
because we think that it is important for us to not close our eyes on the impact of movements within South Africa into Gauteng and out, of movements from outside the borders of South Africa into Gauteng and the other provinces. And we want to be able to say, this is actually reality. And somebody asked us, but why? Why Gauteng? We chose this because Gauteng is still South Africa's economic hub. Gauteng has experienced the highest net migration of all the nine provinces. The inter-provincial migration to Gauteng continues to lead provincial migration streams in this country. Data provided to us by States SA also indicates that the number of international migrants also increased steadily and constitute a significant segment of the total estimated immigration to Gauteng. According to the 2011 national census, South Africa sits at uh, close to 52, 53 million. We know that we have increased since 2011. With Gauteng sitting with the highest population density at about 12 million. The province continues to be perceived as offering greater job opportunities and associated um, improvements in the standards of living than most of our other eight provinces. The multidisciplinary delegation of the NCOP, which will be here this week, will be divided into eight groups, which will visit different sites related to the theme, and we will be in all the uh, metropolitan municipalities, so we'll be in Ekuruleni, we will be in the Johannesburg Metro, we will be in Swani, and we will be in the Western District Municipality. The sites that we will visit will be clustered in the following. We will look at social services, at peace and security. We will look at growth and development. We will look at human settlements and the infrastructure. The communities will have a public meeting in the following areas. In the Zamini Multipurpose Center in Soweto, in Ekuruleni, we will be in the Springs Town Hall. In Tswane, we will be at uh, Stillman Community Hall in Hammondskrad. In Stanza Bopape Community in Mamelodi. In the West End, we will be at the Western Area Banqueting Hall. Now, Parliament should pride its, itself as a custodian of the promotion of the values of human dignity, of equality, of non-racialism, of non-sexism. But it is, also, it is also required to ensure participatory democracy. So it is important to maintain an ongoing connection between parliament and the people in a substantial sense that gives practical meaning to all our democratic systems. So we are here this week for this pre-visit. We will be back here in November for the taking parliament to the people's main program. Our focus here will be on immigration, on its impact, but it does not mean that the people of Gauteng will only talk to us about issues, immigration or emigration. They can talk to the NCOP about any other issue that bothers them that is related to service delivery. They will be within their rights to approach us on any issue, even though we say that we will be focusing on this and that and that. We intend to do an extra leg between now and uh, in November when we come back, that whatever it is that we will get here, we might not have enough space uh, in Datita Gamma. But we think that we will in 
the period in between, identify the policy gaps, and then be able to bring all your high-end stake uh, holders who have an interest to come and say, are we right together with the communities of Gauteng when we say this policy is weak here and it, that one is weak there? So we are here, ladies and gentlemen, just to say to you that uh, from tomorrow we are in Gauteng. We will be joined by members of the provincial legislature. We will be joined by the councillors across Gauteng. We will also expect some um, members of the other provincial legislatures to join us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chairperson. That was the Chairperson of the National Council of Provinces, Metandi Mudise. Um, I want to give over now to the NCOP Chief Whip to see if maybe he has a word or two. Not interested. <laughs> All right. And uh, an opportunity also to the speaker of the city of Johannesburg, just for him to say a few words. I just want to say thank you very much uh, for the be media being here, but also for the opportunity to uh, the residents of the city of Johannesburg to interact with um, parliament um, to ensure that all those issues that they've been complaining for years about um, finally gets attention. So the pre-oversight visit would be an opportunity to actually see what the issues are within the city of Johannesburg. And I think there's a myriad of issues that uh, uh, will be raised during this pre-oversight visit for Parliament, obviously, to give more attention to those things that we have a problem with. And I think most of them, in fact, includes health, and as you said, um, migration, um, which has become a big problem, uh, because on a daily basis we get over, I mean on a monthly basis, close to 3,500 people migrating to the city of Johannesburg, and all of them wants employment, housing, uh, services, bulk services, and that's the reason why we've got 180 informal settlements within the city. So all those things, in fact, needs attention. But I think the biggest problem is bulk infrastructure on water, on sewer, and all those other issues. So, um, and I'm sure that the residents will, will raise those issues. And as you know, in the north, uh, from the Deep Slut area, uh, that surrounding area, hospital, I think communities have been crying for some time on this particular issue. The nearest hospital for people living in Deep Slut is in fact uh, in Tembisa, which is very far. Um, and, and those are some of the issues I think communities will raise. So all I want to say to the communities is come, raise your issues, make sure that it's recorded so that uh, Parliament can, can take effect and obviously assist in achieving uh, what you want to achieve in the city. Thank you. Yeah, thank you to the speaker. We are now going to get to the opportunity, uh, give an opportunity to all the members of the media over here for them to ask uh, their questions, uh, clarity seeking questions. And um, uh, when you do, colleagues, please uh, give us your name and say name and the media house that you come from. Uh, and then give us your question. Um, my colleagues will give us a roving mic that is there. All right, there we go. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Lusa Ponyanda. I am from the Sowetan. Uh, as the theme of this visit is the issue of migration, recently in, the, in White City in Soweto, there was a violence that was targeting at owners of shops that were from foreign countries. Um, my question then would be, what is Parliament's plan, and if there is any, to address such issues to teach people on how, this, what, how to handle such uh, complaints as a society instead of going through what we saw recently?
Let us take the second question. Uh, thank you so much. This is Christo Morolong from Teardrop Media. I think my first question will just touch base on what my colleague have, uh, asked, you know, to say. Uh, you're mentioning international migration, and uh, we've seen with the mayor of the city of Johannesburg wanting to take uh, the Department of Home Affairs to, to court over that. And I know the speaker of Vasco da Gama will know about that. So how are you dealing, because this whole issue, he was complaining about certain things that the department was not coming forth and threatening to take them to court. How would you deal with those issues? You know, And obviously there will be whole issues, like you were saying, that are going to be raised. I think that's my first question. My second question, yes, you will find issues in the community, and I don't want to preempt. How are you, going to, how are you looking to lessen the impact of the migration, both international and uh, interprovincial? Looking at your other interventions, like the Department of Rural Development, what other, the Department of Cooperative Governance. Obviously, they've got programs that could be done to, you know, instead of overstretching the resources that in Joburg, people could be in the rural areas and being developed and assisted there. Thanks. Name for me again, my brother. I missed your name. Uh, Christo Morolong from Teardrop Media. Teardrop Media. Yes. Teardrop Media, yes. Is there anyone else who wants to ask a question? The gentleman over here. Uh, hello. Can I stand? Uh, my name is Steven Siakwe, editor of uh, Mapepeza Community Newspaper. Uh, my question is two. Uh, the first one is, uh, does Parliament have any policy propositions that they have maybe in place or uh, written that they will propose to uh, legislatures or the, the councils in the municipalities or metros that can help them deal uh, with uh, providing uh, what you call provisions in their budgets for migration policy or anything? Because this migration has not been actually mandated down to the municipal level, which also impacts the metro. So find that the migration is just an issue to them, but it's not taken on a policy level seriously. It's not even discussed in, in council meetings. Uh, the second question is uh, concerning the, the community meetings. Uh, will you have a, a recording system that will make sure that uh, people's submissions as per stakeholders will be recorded and considered and how will you actually give them feedback uh, to, to, to say that this is what have been taken per district for considerations into uh, any propositions that you've been making after the, the event has taken place? Thank you. And over to the chairperson and the panel to respond to your question. Questions? Thank you very much. Um, what is Parliament's plan to deal with uh, the violent outbursts amongst our communities? One of the responsibilities of Parliament um, is public participation, which means we are forced to come down to allow people to express themselves. We are forced to take the inputs which come out of the general populace into our decision-making processes as the, as the NCOP and the National Assembly. But the Constitution also says that we must do public education. Now, I'm going to ask the Secretary to the NCOP to talk more because we've got a very strong public education uh, unit in Parliament which necessarily needs to go into issues, break them down, these heavy concepts, ensure that South Africans and residents who are not necessarily South Africans yet get to understand. Now, when you will remember a few years back when the, this attacks on foreign um, residents and people seeking asylum in South Africa and foreign business owners erupted, that Parliament actually set up an ad hoc committee to go around to address these issues, to calm the nation, but also to come back to Parliament and say to us, this is what we have found. 
And this is how we want to suggest as parliament. Now, does parliament on its own have the power to make policy? We can recommend policy. We have the committees of the National Assembly and the committees of the National Council of Provinces, which interact with people who are supposed to be the custodians of government policies, the ministers, the DGs. So through that, we can actually, in our speeches, advocate, in our committees, make sure that our voices are heard. When we make laws, we can, because once the law has entered parliament, it then is our business. We can then influence the direction, the laws that parliament passes, that our thoughts are carried out. Do we know what we are going to do? No, we want to say to South Africans, Aine Mudikha. We must come down, we must listen to one another. Part of the reason why we are coming in to assess the impact of migration is not just to look at people who come from outside South Africa. It is also to look at to what extent Gauteng as a province is exposed. Because remember, it is not just people from outside the borders, people from the Eastern Cape are here, people from Northwest, people from all the other eight provinces are here. And that is also precisely because Gauteng is seen as a, a better province to get a job. Now, we need to also look at whether this translation of South Africans from the different provinces into Gauteng translates into how the revenue is divided to advantage Gauteng to carry the burden of all the other South Africans from out of the other eight provinces. Because not to do that is also not to be responsible as government because when you give them calculated on the official numbers only of the people who are known, officially speaker, to reside in Gauteng, you also do an injustice to how they plan because they carry people from other provinces. I can attest, I was, a, I was a premier and a speaker in the Northwest. I do know of the discussions between Gauteng and the Northwest on the issues of health, on the patients who are referred by provinces into Gauteng and where the other provinces actually never make good. And therefore that Gauteng then carries this. So we want to look at this and then we want to be able to say, how do we advise? We want to also look at these places where people, and make a distinction between people who are genuinely here because they need asylum, people who are here properly having applied for and been given permits to come into South Africa to reside or to work or to study as against the people who jump fences who come in illegally. And then make a further distinction between the people who are here and go about their business in South Africa very honestly and legally as against the few who then do the wrong things. And that is why we are saying, I Mudiha South Africans, because we must make a distinction here. Not all the people who come from across the borders are bad people. Not all of them. Some of them have come into this country with hard skills which we need. And yes, we must accept some of them are doing wrong things. So let's not have a blanket uh, cover for everybody. Let us begin to tease out whether our policies, our laws, actually enable us to protect those that we need to protect and single out those that we actually need to say, you are not welcome in our country but not take a blanket view that will disadvantage everybody because we do have sympathy to people who need uh, um, to be saved. We were once refugees ourselves in other people's country and there, that is why we need to look at this. But we cannot say that we are happy with the state of affairs and that is why we are here. You, I think I've tried to cover the international, uh, the question you posed. Um, you said, uh, 
home affairs. Um, look, it is ideal that different spheres of government do not take each other to court. Government has a system of mediation which must kick in when there are issues or disputes between the different spheres of government. As I sit here, I would, I would mislead you if I say that uh, that mediation has kicked in between this metro and home affairs. If it has not, we would advise that we actually exploit that and we sit down and we tease out the issues which are so much stressing Johannesburg Metro that they want to go to court. So uh, as I say, one of the good things that will come out of this interaction of taking parliament to the people here is that it will give us the chance to go and critically look at our immigration laws and say this is a witness this is what we suggest as parliament can be done to strengthen these weaknesses which we are identifying. I thought that I would leave the question from Ndate Steven Serh that deals with um, whether we are able to shift funds to the chief whip because he's been an MEC of finance and uh, has been chairing this committee in parliament before she became chief whip to deal with issues, money bills, and dun, 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 dun. Yes, all our meetings, community meetings, are recorded. Um, they will play even on the parliamentary channel. Um, yes, we try to capture everything. Those people who sometimes can't make it on the queues, when the queues are very long, we usually provide separate tables for people to even write and leave there. If they can't write, we have people who will be taking notes, who writing in their languages or interpreting or whatever, whatever. We provide interpretation facilities and nobody is ever wrong at taking parliament to the people. People are free to voice on any topic. So we will be ready to listen to South Africans on the, any matter that they bring forward to us. And yes, it will be recorded. Thanks very much, uh, Chairperson. I think the issue of uh, whether we can allocate to or shift to different spheres, it, it, the government does this in, in two ways. Obviously, every year we have the main budget presentations that is accompanied by a number of bills that must be adopted by parliament upon scrutiny and oversight that parliament uh, plays. In the National Council of Provinces, the act that becomes important or the bill prior to the adoption by the House is the division of revenue. We go into various provinces and discuss the vertical and horizontal allocation of resources we discuss with provinces, we go into details in terms of what is allocated into local sphere of government. And the reason is, if there are very serious issues that arises in terms of allocation, currently I can't just call the, the, the figures, but they are uh, allocation for provinces, allocation for, for local sphere of government. We allow a very extensive process of discussions in the NCOP. Currently what we are doing, we are reviewing our money bills because we want to provide more time for provinces to have a meaningful input into the budget so that when there is budget adjustment, it is clear what kind of problems are we addressing. So, so it is within that context that we, we, we participate and we believe that amending the money bills will allow an objective process of the parliament, especially the National Council of Provinces. But most importantly, both the chairperson of the Council of the NCOP and the speaker have in the past established what we call budget office to have an independent 
or budget office that operates more on an expertise and professionalism to ensure that parliament does play a very prominent role on the budgets so that also how we deal with this technical process, there's capacity, first and foremost, on members of parliament, particularly those who deal with finance and appropriations, so that we should be able to, to, not only that when we play oversight, but we should be able to follow where the money is and the impact of such allocations. Uh, thanks very much. Yeah, I, I think I'll just uh, respond and say thank you very much to uh, Member Dise for um, giving the undertaking on exploiting the discussions around home affairs. I think it doesn't help anybody to put your hand, your head in the sand um, and not uh, discuss issues or try and deal with the issues. I think the issue that uh, the executive mayor raised is critical in the city of Johannesburg. Um, it must be addressed. And uh, policy or change in how home affairs deal with the illegal migrants. And here, you can't comb everybody uh, with the same comb. We're talking about those people that are legal, illegal in the country. Um, and how to deal with it, because it doesn't help us to hide. It's there. Our people face it on a daily basis. Um, and you can go and look at the inner city, not only the inner city. Uh, and and I, here I can talk about other metros, Kempton Park, um, you know, different areas within the city of Johannesburg where it's become just too much. And, and, and people want uh, parliament and home affairs to deal with these issues. And the quicker that discussion takes place, I think the better for all of us. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much to the panelists. Um, I'll open up for a second round of questionings if anyone wants to ask a question. I see two hands, three ones. So we'll do Kaya, and the gentleman is sitting next to Kaya, and you'll be the third one. Thanks. Hi, good evening. It's uh, Kyle Kumalo here from ENCA. So maybe just to get a sense from you, uh, Chair, and the team there, you know, just on the ground in South Africa, there is quite a degree of disillusionment, you know, the technical recession and may, many other economic challenges, whether you look at fuel prices. So apart from migration, are you perhaps looking at, looking at some of those uh, domestic challenges confronting South Africans. But apart from that, I just want to understand, so once you take the parliament to the people, so once you get those concerns, um, how are you going to make sure that you talk to the custodians of the policies, your DGs, your ministers, so that uh, we can really see the, the change down on the ground? Thank you. Thank you. Right, my name is Nick Ele. I'm from Ecole Jose News. Very little is known about the role of NCOP, reason being that very little is being chronicled in newspapers. What I want to know from Mrs. Mudise is, what is, what, what is your department doing to educate the masses and the laymen in the street about the role of the NCOP? Because I can tell you now, I can take you to the streets in any township, we ask 10 people, what is NCOP? None of them will know. So what are you doing to educate the, 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 the masses? Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you very much. Uh, good evening, colleagues and distinguished guests. My name is Cliff Shiko from Alex FM in Alexandra. I've got uh, three questions, and one question from a, a resident from Alexandra. He just saw my tweet and asked the question as well. Um, my first question is regarding your powers as the NCOP. What powers do you have to make sure that uh, the, 
the provincial governments, they are accountable for any um, problems uh, that they have in terms of service delivery in their respective provinces. And maybe if you can share the achievements, if the uh, portfolio committee have done to make sure that uh, different provincial governments are being held accountable in the last 12 months, if you can share with us. The second question is uh, to the speaker of the city of Johannesburg, uh, Mr. Vasco, Vasco da Gama. Uh, recently, we lost three firefighters in a tragic incident. And um, I don't know, uh, I, as, this, as the, this, the council, are you going to look at uh, calling the public safety committee to ensure that we have more fire engines and equipment to save lives? And still on that, to the NCOP, uh, MEC Mamavolo came out to the public and admitted that his building uh, was not compliant. Uh, the question is, will you sub subpoena uh, the, the MEC to NCOP to account uh, on that regard? Because we don't know what's going to happen next. Uh, the third question, usually uh, there are, for example, we have a new government in Tswani and Johannesburg under the DA coalition. And you have the ANC government at provincial level. And when there is a service delivery backlog, you ask the mayor or someone, then they will say, no, there's no enough budget from the provincial government. Then it, it's, it's like a cat and a mouse game and at the expense of the people on the ground. And the last question from my, 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 my follower on Twitter, Jabu, he asked if, when will the Public Service Commission come so that they can uh, take part in those uh, com uh, public hearings. Thank you. It's on. I think I just want to comment on one issue. Uh, it has been raised. I think we, the, it, we view it very critical that we should have an opportunity to discuss uh, economic development, development and growth. But I think what the chair have said earlier, he said that our taking parliament to the people is in twofold. This is the pre-visit, where specifically members are going into specific sites. If you like, you may say it's coping exercise. Seek to understand what exactly, how does the national government sought to support the severely affected province and municipalities? How do we deal with this problem? In an intersphere of government, I think the chair has made that point. So, said that on, during the month of November, there's going to be an intense discussion emanating from what impressions are arising from the NCOP so that we are clear in terms of what are the gaps, what are the issues that must be placed firmly on the agenda. I believe that we'll be interested to understand as well what is the Department of Trade and Industry, what is public enterprises doing how is it integrated with the South African Development, uh, SADC, for instance, Economic Integration and Development? What are those efforts of national government initiatives that are aimed at reducing inflow, uh, ensuring that there's inflow of investment both in South Africa and at SADC? So there's going to be a very interesting discussion that this process uh, is going to unleash. But I think the most important point that also, what, from what the chair said earlier, was that the National Council of Provinces recognizes that this is a complex matter globally, but it's an important issue to discuss. It cannot be avoided. So, so part of what the NCOP will do is to ensure first and foremost that this doesn't degenerate into a xenophobic outburst in our communities. 
taking from the terms of reference that has been prepared uh, for this visit. It points out we're interested in to looking into specific matters that will have to be addressed out of all those national departments, provincial and local sphere of government issues that has been identified. So I, I, just, I, I just believe that we, we need to, I'm tempted to speak about the issue of the NCOP, that the NCOP is not known. But I think also it's important that uh, at, at the media, both print, electronic, uh, also help to make the, 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 the society of South Africa to understand. More often people say parliament. When they say parliament, they think parliament of South Africa is constituted by only one house. Parliament of South Africa is constituted by two important houses, the National Assembly and the National Council of Provinces. So it's important also when we communicate, we should avoid the unintended consequence that by not explicitly articulating what the House of Parliament represents must also, may also weaken uh, the important message that should be communicated to our people. I think I should... Um say that uh, the House Chairperson Committees of the NCOP has arrived. He flew in from Mpomalanga and the plane was delayed. You are welcome, Dati um, The NCOP is one of the two houses. I refuse to call it the second house because the Constitution does not define the NCOP as inferior to the National Assembly. It talks about two houses which when constituted together form parliament. You do not have a speaker of, the, of parliament. You have the speaker of the National Assembly and the chairperson of the NCOP together forming the executive authority of parliament. In other words, neither of us can take a lead on anything without the other, which affects parliament. Now, we are too distinct. The NCOP's role, because we always must say that we are always also, I don't want to say bemused by also members of the media who do not understand what we do. Put aside the, the general populace, our role is very distinct from that of the NA. They have 400 people. The executive comes from them. They choose the president. They fire the president. We don't choose the president. We don't fire the president. We come in from the provinces via the provincial houses, which second us. But once we are there, we become full-time members of parliament. We go to our provinces because we then, as the NCOP, have a direct link with the province, provinces, we hold them to account, we are supposed to scrutinize. Structured as we are currently, with the numbers, we are 54 versus the 400 on the other side. So, we also have 10 seats for local government. They can do everything with us, but vote. Um, sometimes they attend to debates, sometimes they don't. I make the excuse for Salga because I keep on saying it is also the funding towards municipalities and the funding towards parliament which is making this voice of local government issues at a national platform by local government itself an issue. So yes, one of the reasons why we are not prominent is also the structuring of the parliamentary budget and the structuring which enables public representatives, both at provincial and at local government, to interact as efficiently as possible between us. But also the Constitution says that we, we are independent and we should be non-interfering in each other's business. We only interfere as the NCOP, and I use the word interfere very carefully, when it comes to section 100 and one, section 139 of the constitution. Because then the constitution says that the NCOP must give the nod whether 
a national national administration can take over a province or whether a provincial administration can take over a municipality. We have to take that decision as the NCOP. So effectively speaking, you could say we are that house which is fashioned to do intergovernmental relations and cooperative relations. We must just fine tune our act because we must be there. Our business in the provinces is known. We have, cons we have a provincial weeks where members of the NCOP spend time in the provinces on whatever issue we choose for the particular period. We have provincial local, local government week where we focus on issues local government. And we have constituency weeks where members go into their constituencies and must bring back issues of constitutions, constitu constituencies. So for us, the issue that the, you are raising of you have a situation where the metro is DA and the province is ANC. Strictly speaking, both Ntateta Gama and myself are presiding officers full stop when it comes to our business. He has his colors, I have my colors. But when it comes to the NCOP business, I must talk to the speaker of Johannesburg Metro as I speak to the speaker of Ekrulen. Make no distinction, because our purpose as parliament is not to see the colors, especially in the NCOP. It is to represent the voice of the people in the constituencies he comes from and I come from. So as much as possible, we try to say that, and, and we are also distinct in our debates. There are debates which happen in the floor of the NCOP, which are provincial. We don't care what your party is. We want you to discuss with us on the issues which are of provincial importance to you and to your constituency. There are debates which come up which are on the party line. And those are fewer. So we, we are that mongrel of a house which also has delegations, special delegates, who come from the provinces from time to time, led by the speaker or led by the premier. So yes, um, I thought that Pindela at some point would talk to the public education unit of parliament and what they are doing. You also asked us, whether we will be summoning Ndate Mamabolu. The chairpersons in both houses have the powers to summon anybody in South, South Africa to invite, and if it comes to a push, to summons. So it is within the powers of the co committees of parliament in both houses to either invite or summon Mama Bolo for a discussion on the issues here. And I think that when this happens, we came out as parliament and we conveyed our condolences to the families. We want to continue to say that we do not at this stage, until we have a report in front of us, want to allocate blame. We want to say that we should ensure that when people are deployed in whatever field they are in, they are properly equipped to carry out their duties. So for us as parliament, it is ensure that you resource people to do the best to save South Africans. I'm not, oh, then there was a question on whether the public service. I'm not sure what they are expected to come about, but as the NCOP, we can carry the message and say the public service, go down, the people want to talk to you. With us, um, the first question had been um, the economy, yes. Um, our theme says the impact of, of migration. So we're looking at all, deepening cooperative governance for the accelerated service delivery and development. So we're interested in socioeconomic issues. We will discuss the issues which are making 
or which contribute towards the sluggish growth of, of our economy. We will be, as Parliament, also be looking at the, the, the packages which are being proposed to give a boost to the economy. We are always concerned about the level of unemployment, especially youth and women unemployment. But it is not only that. We also have a duty to monitor whether or not the legislation which has been passed is, pro is, 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 is uh, totally and completely followed through. For instance, um, would it affect the economy better if we looked at the Employment uh, Policy Act? Um, are we always making sure that people of disability and people of different uh, racial groups are represented in our workforces? Will it not change the face of what we are seeing today if we do that? So we, that is our job and we, we, we think we, that we should do that. Speaker, I think you had some. Thank you very much, uh, Ma'am Adisa. Um, I think the question that you raised on the three unfortunate death of the three firefighters, um, and unfortunately, it, it, it all came as a shock to all of us, um, because one doesn't want to lose any of your workers in this type of condition, especially when uh, these buildings actually belonged this particular building belongs to government. Um, and I believe there is another nine buildings like that in the city of Johannesburg that is in, in the same state. And at last, there is attention given to it. In other words, this unfortunate incident actually highlighted the issue around uh, the building, buildings that are dilapidated and where our government is not taking care of them. And in fact, our workers work in that appalling conditions. Um, the, the, the second issue that I want to raise around that is that for a very long time, um, you know, in different media reports, the city has been reporting on the appalling state of not only uh, government buildings or buildings that are um, uh, owned by provincial government or national government, but also of local government and private property owners throughout the city. And every time you, you try and, and evacuate people from these buildings, the human rights lawyers, as uh, the mayor says, comes in, you are stopped, you go through a lengthy court process, um, and something must be done around these issues. It can't be that we fight for, 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 for people today um, and tomorrow when they, uh, the building burns and a whole lot of people get injured, and it's not the first time, then, uh, you know, everybody is quiet. Keeps back while you were defending the same people that you know uh, has been doing wrong. So I think some of these issues, and obviously the migration issue also plays a role within this whole, whole issue, in the sense that there is too many people that are looking for shelter, and while we've got all these issues around, and I think it's high time that we address all of them so that we are able to deal with the, uh, not only the migration issue, but bad buildings in themselves. And it cannot be an excuse uh, for not looking after our own properties. So something must happen uh, around this issue. I think the workers had enough, and they were toy-toying long before uh, this building actually caught fire. There was just one question. Um, you asked whether the NCOP has um, this taking parliament to the people has any benefit to the people. Um, yes. Um, we went to the Eastern Cape and focused on education. We discovered uh, pit toilets at uh, ECD schools. At primary schools, we discovered that there was no electricity. We discovered um, bad infrastructure. We cracked a whip. Um, even before we left the program, the toilets were being delivered. 
uh, boreholes were being dug in, in schools. We, we go there, we have introduced another lake, we go there after a year. In between the, this, um, the, 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 the pre-visit phase, the proper program, there is a year where we come back later. Throughout this time, we sit on the neck of the executive to ensure that those things that people raise with the NCOP are followed up. We compile because even before we come on the pre-visit, we know what is happening in a particular province because we have done research. We can tell you now we know in which clinic 43% of the women who are delivering are non-South Africans. We can tell you at which clinic one person disguises and runs between three clinics and gets ARVs meant for 12 people alone and goes and sells them. So we do do our research. We then come back after we have followed up and say to the people, this is what was delivered. This is what is outstanding. This is what we are failing to do with this particular MEC or this particular minister or this particular council. Because our duty is not to protect the executive. Our duty is to ensure that people don't just raise issues with us. And in between, as we are following up on these members of the executive, we keep the presidency informed. This is the extent that we are going. We are getting joy here. We are not getting joy here. So that when we finally come up and we say, this is our report, uh, this one is not moving at all. We know what we are talking about. And I can tell you that in the Western Cape, we did very well. Even now, the issues that we raised are still done. And also, remember that when we go there, some of the issues that we uncover, either the municipality or the province or even national, has not put aside money to fix them. And that is why you give them this time, so that in the next budget, they budget and they have the resources to fix those things which we know and we agree with the general uh, public that this thing must be fixed. So we're not just taking a talk shop. We're serious about what we do. We can't be spending three weeks every, every two years in, in, in a province and not be able to deliver. So we want to ensure that this apex program of the NCOP delivers. But it is also the province, the, 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 the program, that actually distinguishes the NCOP from the National Assembly, because we do this. Just to respond to the one question that was raised on the fire engines, um, you asked whether um, are we getting new ones or what is happening around them. As you remember, I think the media release from the MMC on on uh, JMPD and obviously EMS has said that there is currently 15 fire engines. Seven of them are operational, fully operational. The others are in, in the workshop. That's the first thing. The second thing is that the tender has gone out this week for the um, requirement of 27. There is a need for 120 in the city of Johannesburg to adequately deal with the whole of Johannesburg. And obviously, the intention is to uh, bring 27 this year and in the next uh, um, uh, bu budgeting cycle ensure that we are also able to budget for some more so that eventually we reach the 120 that is actually needed in the city. So, um, um, as you know, um, and I don't want to talk about the past, but I'm saying that uh, we are dealing with the issue currently. Thanks. Uh, 
Thank you very much. I think I'll now hand over to Advocate Pinella, who is the secretary to the NCOP, to speak about the public education. Thank you very much, uh, and uh, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. The question was about uh, public education and uh, to ensure that uh, the public participates meaningfully in the processes of uh, the National Council of Provinces. For the purposes of uh, this uh, previous uh, program, we do have uh, public uh, education uh, practitioners who are in the, in the province. We have a team that is uh, in the city of Tswane. We have the team that is uh, in the city of Johannesburg. We have the team that is in the city of Ikuruleni. We also have a team that is uh, in the West End uh, conducting uh, workshops, meeting members of the public to ensure that they do understand what the theme is all about so that they can participate meaningfully in the processes and proceedings uh, of uh, the public meetings. So for the purposes of the public meetings, uh, members of the public will be invited and as indicated by the chairperson and the speaker as well as uh, the, the chief whip, the purpose is to focus not on xenophobic attacks or anything of that sort, but to concentrate or to focus on the topic at hand, which is uh, the impact of uh, migration on the services. So our teams are out to ensure that members of the public are educated on the theme so that when the public meetings do come, uh, they participate meaningfully in the, in the processes of uh, the National Council of, uh, of Provinces. That also deals with the question that uh, was put about whether people do know and understand the role of uh, the National Council of Provinces. I think the chairperson has sufficiently uh, covered that uh, area. But uh, perhaps uh, we should also make an appeal to the members of the media uh, as Chief Whip has indicated, when members of the media uh, report sometimes, they report in such a way that uh, the undue, perhaps, uh, uh, coverage is given to the National Assembly at the expense of the National Council of Provinces. So we hope that uh, those members of the media who are here will make sure that uh, they cover the, the proceedings of uh, the National Council of Provinces so that people should know and understand the role that the National Council of Provinces uh, plays in so far as uh, parliamentary processes are concerned. Thank you, Chair. I think that uh, sort of closes our session for today.